so sorry about the sound. I have to press the button. <laughs> right. Hey everybody, I am here with Yanni from Parabellum uh, War Games, and we've just stumbled across uh, a new fantasy skirmish game which is going to be released at the end of this month with a couple of armies which really caught my eye, which we will show you some still shots and some pan shots of later, the, the Nordic army, the Norsemen. Um, please Yanni, uh, I don't want to take too much of your time because we've just had a massive chat already, tell us about this fantasy skirmish game because it, it looks beautiful um, and you've told me some of the mechanics which sound really different and it's something I think I will really enjoy myself, so let's, uh, let's go. So this is Conquest, it's a mass battle fantasy game that's yep. actually played on a 4x4 table. Yep. Uh, it's been in development for the last three years. Okay. Uh, we start off with two factions, the spires that you see here and yep. the hundred kings that we'll see on later. Yep, so they're uh, on the other side of these castles. Exactly. So uh, th this game is actually geared both for competitive play and for campaign play. Yeah. Uh, it also has extensive background, so we've done a lot of world building. We've released four novellas and two videos regarding the background of the game. So we have very strong aesthetics, art, and, and lore so for it. You can get the lore books to go with this as well, or at least somewhere to read the lore to find out about the backgrounds, that's great. I know exactly. a lot of people that really it, like the flavor. It's all free, free access for everybody. Oh, wow. As is the PDF of the rules, it's on our website. Oh wow, that's that's a real big draw. And upon <laughs> release, there's going to be an army builder which we've developed. Yeah. Uh, that some of it's moved very, 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 and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Someone moved the camera. Yeah. That's okay. No, no, we're still, we're still good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so. Um, uh, Free be, uh, army builder that people yeah. can actually use to make up their armies. Oh, too. so they can use their you can use your army builder to build their army. Exactly, and know what get. Okay. exactly, and they can have printouts with all the information there. So it's an easy access of information for all the updates and all the rules of the game. Okay, yeah. Now the the game itself uh, is very unique in the way it plays. We've yeah. managed to have a mass battle army uh, game that plays in an hour and twenty minutes, an hour and a half. And yeah. This has been confirmed by play testing. That's excellent. I mean, I like skirmish. I also also like massed horde armies, but I don't have three, four hours. It's one of those. It's one of those. Circ blame my circumstances. Three kids, three dogs. I need my games to last less than two hours. So that's ideal. Uh, exactly. Yep. Now the way we've achieved, uh, we've achieved that is that everything. Sorry. Correct. So we've achieved an hour and 20 minutes, an hour and a half uh, of play time by the following things. Yeah. First of all, nothing's deployed on the table. Everything arrives in waves according to their troop type. Okay. So light, medium, and heavy. Yep. Uh, the, the, everything has a different purpose for the game. The yep. light go forward to grab ground. Mm -hmm. The medium enter right behind them to consolidate and grab objectives. And the heavies come in to wrap up the late game. I like it. So pressure increases as the game goes on. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So nothing coexists necessarily at the same time, yep. and that saves a lot of time, as does not having deployment. Yep. Uh, the other thing which's important about the game is that the reserves in this game arrive from this size behind your battle lines. Yep. So the more aggressive you play, the more the game rewards you, because right. your reserves are going to be where you need them. Okay. There's no losing time for them to run up to help you. Okay. So the, they come in in the waves. Um, the pressure gets put on as you push through the game. There's what high risk, high reward if you want to play fast. Um, Defence-wise then, are there armies that are suited to playing more defensively as their way of winning? Or is it very much about taking ground from the other person? It's very much about taking, gra taking ground from the other person. But obviously, every every army has its own secret agenda as well. Okay. So there's also secret objectives, which are uh, which are faction specific. Oh, wow. So things they can achieve during the game to get extra points other than just grabbing ground. Okay. And they can be as critical as anything else in winning the game. Okay. So what might that be, for example, these guys look like they're set up to defend. Uh, what might be a, an objective that they're trying to achieve? Uh, for example, an objective for them is to make sure that one of their units actually makes it out of the table edge. Right, so well, they to actually, the other end of To the, the other end, so breakthrough, yep. so they can actually survive and get the message. For the spires, for example, uh, there's quite a few ones that have to do with either killing, specific, uh, like assassination, because we have an assassin model here. Right. So assassinate this, that one over there, that's, that's the mimetic assassin. I like so that. assassinating an enemy character yep. or, or destroying a unit within your half of the table because these guys for example their background like to collect biomass that's their currency yep, that's yep. what they utilize to make their constructs right right so there's quite a few <laughs> things that they want to each, each can achieve during a turn which will surprise your opponent and will change your play style it's a very gruesome army this this army yes they are they are <laughs> the the other mechanic that this game has is a fog of war mechanic yeah uh, what 
we've basically done is that every regiment has its own activation card. Yep. At the beginning of the turn, you stack them in the order you want to activate them in. Yep. Now, in this game, it's not I go everything, you go everything. We alternate activation of I regiments. I like that. That is a system that I, I... There are several games, like the, the Warlord guys have some similar with dice. Exactly. I like that. It's you not... It's, it's an, a problem of mine with a lot of games is we set up beautifully, you go, oh, half my stuff's gone. Yeah, I go then, now. Yeah, exactly, yeah, that, exactly. that's, I want to use the miniatures that you pay good money for and spend a lot of time painting. Exactly. Nice and, and also, it, it, it stops people from playing just playing reactively. Yeah. With this type of Fog of War, you don't know in which order your opponent is activating what. Yeah. We alternate activation, so you're committed either to your plan yep. or if you want to play more defensively, you need to foresee what your opponent is trying to do and mess it up. Okay, so you have to have your plan going in, but also you need to bear in mind that something else could happen. So it's not necessarily rock, paper, scissors, or if he does this, I'm going to do this. Exactly. I like it, I like it. No, no plan survives contact with the enemy, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, but you have to try. You have to You have to make sure that you have a cohesive plan. And this is obviously upset it a bit but with characters or with faction-specific abilities. So you have your hero characters. Exactly, well. exactly. But the heroes don't act on their own. They become part of the unit. They're yeah. almost like an upgrade to the unit. Okay. But they offer quite a bit to the strategy level of the yeah. game and add more hit points. So let's I say, might have attacks. like an elite unit that is able to shred, but it's not going to just rule the map because no, that, that no. happens. It's in not. Okay. It's not. It's it's not. It's not a game that focuses on heroes destroying everything on the table. Yep. They have the same stats as their faction does. Yep. They're not superhuman. At least not in the Spires and the Hunter Kingdoms. Yep. Maybe a bit more when it comes to the Nords yep. because they have some really cool characters that are really strong. The that's the, the army that I'm waiting for. <laughs> okay, good to hear that. <laughs> uh, so so there's, there's multiple levels for the game in order to achieve victory. Okay, that's cool. That's really nice. Um, right, okay, anything else you want to add about that? Because, to be honest, just from that description, I'm quite keen to get this installed, get this being played on our tables. The scenery oh. obviously makes it fantastic. Obviously, um, it, it, it does really, inspire. <laughs> yeah, you've got a really, really nice booth here, I have to say. Um, and the, okay, so these, have you, you've done these custom jobs? Well, the, these or are, we wanted to have some, some, some dead, dead, yeah. dead, dead, dead so, monsters, uh, but they're I'll actually nice made little. from the actual plastic kit. Yeah. They're not, uh, so they're you, not separate ones. You've kit bashed these. Exactly. This is one of their constructs. Exactly. Nice. This, that's called the Abomination. Okay. It's actually part of the core box set oh. as well. So it's something that you get in the initial uh, two-player two starter set. Yep. Uh, the background of it, actually, because these guys are taking on the Elves, the Spires. Yep. Uh, they actually bioengineer what they want. So what you see here primarily is not them. Yeah. Uh, it's their constructs that they've uh, produced okay. for war. These little, the smaller units, these are constructs as well? Yes. These are called clones which means that uh, original DNA of the Spires was used. Yep. They do participate in the lower levels of society, but they're not actually them. This guy, for example, who is the Spire, who is the Ferromancer, oh, yeah. he's a lower level Spire. Yep. He, he's the one that actually has to get on the battlefield. He exudes pheromones in order to direct <laughs> the troops, okay. and that's why he's wearing a respirator mask in right. order not to breathe in the pheromones he's exuding. And I'm assuming he's like a crucially important unit. If you were to lose him, you'd be in a bit of trouble. Uh, not for during the battle. We yeah. don't want to have upsets have of that sort because units are easy to kill off yeah. if you focus a lot on them, and that would take a character with them. But the the Ferromancer basically directs the troops of the spires yeah. on, on, on the ground. You wouldn't lose control of your army by yeah. him going it's not away. It's like a rallying mechanic. For no, no, no. Yeah. But, but he does offer quite a few boosts to the army. Yeah. So losing him would be detrimental, yeah. but you wouldn't be uh, the the battle world. losing. And also, a, a mechanic which has to do with army selection is that according to which character you select, yep. there's a selection tree. Right, right. Yeah. So he unlocks specific type of units. Right. So you'll okay. have multiple characters in your army, and they will yep. each unlock different types so of, you of can units. Theme around that. Style. Exactly. Right. And also that allows us to have different playstyles within the same faction. Uh, so I can choose a faction that appeals to me and a playstyle that appeals to me. I'm not exactly into a certain faction. Exactly. So if I want to play speedy smashy I can do it with any army I just choose my heroes wisely exactly my tree. I like that that's uh, for example for the hundred kingdoms the humans yeah uh, 
if you pick a mounted lord, he can select mounted squires, which is his light unit, yep. household knights, which is his medium unit, yep. and then heavy cavalry. Right. If you repeat mounted lords multiple times, you can have a cavalry on the so, army. Okay, only. so you can have a very smashy army, very fast. Exactly, exactly. Um, do you have flying units in this, or is it all ground based at the uh, moment? There are flying units, but that's represented primarily with uh, ease of movement over obstacles yep. and, and speed. Okay. It's, it's nothing like a, an airplane mechanic yeah, that they're flying around the battlefield. No, no, no. Oh, that's really cool. So this looks fantastic. Um, so yeah, available at the end of this month, so end the of end, this of, month, uh, yes. end of June, um, and then future army expansions, sort of November, end of the year, we're looking for that. Well, uh, the, the, the third faction comes out in August, which yep. is the Dwegum, so quite close the, by. The dwarves. The dwarves, yep. exactly. Dwarves. And the and in November, we released the Nords, which started taking a human faction with Vikings, ogres, sea giants, yeah, trolls, and really nice, a lot more. Really nice models for the ogres there. Just, just, I've got some footage of as well, which is fantastic. So, in summary, 4x4 table, fantastic. Most people can have access to that rather than 6x4. Does clearly work well on a big table as well. Um, you go, I go, all sort of mechanic-ish, uh, which means you're not going to set up all your units and then just watch them get decimated. True. Um, I really like this Fog of War mechanic. That's interesting. I would like to see some competitive play with this. Uh, I think this is probably one of the most potent it's probably one of the most exciting releases that I've seen at the Games Expo this weekend. I've been here since Friday. I, I really <laughs> like this. Um, it appeals a lot to me. So thank you so much for your time. Thank uh, you for if coming. If you guys want to find more about you, why, where can they go? Website? Uh, we have our website. We have yep. our social media. So parabellumwargames.com. Parabellumwargames.com, yep. exactly. Uh, same thing on our social media, Facebook and yep. Twitter. Uh, so we have most information is actually on Facebook and on our website. Okay, cool. So we'll throw some links to that up as well. Um, guys, if you want to see this, stocked let us know because you are working through one of our normal suppliers so easy for us to get a hold of which is Glad fantastic um yeah vote with your thumbs vote with your hearts and all, all that jazz from social media isn't it okay so, uh thank you so much for your time it's pretty much the end of the day now so i'm really happy that i caught you before i left uh so thanks again thank you fantastic thank you.